looks like we're online. Hello everyone. I'm sorry I'm a little late getting a devotion out on video. I hope everyone's having a good week. Your devotion this week is a little bit different. As you can see, I'm I'm not in my office. Sarah got called in to help a child with a surgery this afternoon. So I came home and watched the kids. So they I've got them in front of the TV. <laughs> um, and uh, hopefully the episode will last until this is over and they don't come barging in but anything can happen anyway i hope you're doing well uh <laughs> I'd, I'd pretend like this was planned but it isn't i left my book on bonhoeffer's sermons in my office so today we're gonna hear a little bit different perspective on a psalm um the psalm let's do the psalm first the psalm is psalm 79 and this psalm was written um, shortly after Israel had been defeated, conquered, subjected, humiliated by the Babylonians. The Babylonians were, were a, a pagan worshiping empire um, to the east of Israel. And they had conquered Israel, humiliated them, made them pay tribute, made them bend the knee uh, for you Game of Thrones fans. But they were humiliated, they were defeated, they had bit, they had lost in battle. And that's when the psalm was written. And you can hear the speaker voice his frustration, his shame, his humiliation. And he asks God to vindicate his people. Here's what he says. Help us, O God, of our salvation. For the glory of your name, deliver us and forgive our sins for your name's sake. Why should the nations say, where is their God? Let the avenging of the outpoured blood of your servants be known among the nations before our eyes. Let the groans of the prisoners come before you according to your great power. Preserve those doomed to die. Return sevenfold into the bosom of our neighbors the taunts with which they taunted you, O Lord. Then we, your people, the flock of your pasture, will give thanks to you forever. From generation to generation, we will recount your praise. Again, you can hear the human voice speaking in the psalm. You can hear the shame, the humiliation, and you can hear the concern. Uh, what look? Don't let the nations mock us, God. That they're going to look at us in our subjection and defeat, and they're going to say, "Where's their God? Their God didn't help them." And then. <clears throat> then there's a request for vengeance. Repay, repay sevenfold, the speaker of the psalm says. <clears throat> um, so how does Jesus respond to this? How does Jesus respond to this? How is it fair, in other words, the question is, how is it fair for a more wicked nation to punish a more righteous nation? I mean, sure, Israel sinned. Israel wasn't perfect, but the Babylonians didn't even believe in God. They didn't acknowledge God in any way. They were more violent. Um, they broke more of the commandments. By any account, Babylon was a more wicked nation than Israel. And how could it be that a more wicked nation would trample down a more righteous one? Well, enter Jesus. And the first thing that Jesus says that, res that relates to this psalm is, Instead of repaying vengeance sevenfold against the neighbors, Jesus says, forgive your neighbor, 70 times seven. So Jesus transforms the desire for vengeance into forgiveness. Now, Jesus was righteous, and the Roman Empire was a pagan, wicked nation. And when Jesus died, when he was crucified, when they put him in the ground, a pagan, wicked nation had trampled underfoot the righteous one but God raised Jesus from the dead and made him judge over all kings all nations all men living and dead and so God vindicates his righteous one over and against the evil oppressors that's that's one of the meanings of the resurrection and so this psalmist's very human desire for God to put things right to right the wrongs to make just the unjust situation uh, is answered in the resurrection of Jesus. The righteous is trampled underfoot by the wicked. 
and God vindicates the righteous. And that's what the psalmist is looking for. The psalmist is looking for God to put things right. And we see that in the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. And the psalm ends with this beautiful line. <clears throat> then we, your people, the flock of your pasture, will give thanks to you forever. From generation to generation, we will recount your praise. So gratitude is our response to what God has done in vindicating us in Jesus and raising him from the dead. We give thanks. And that's what Fleming Rutledge, she's a, an Episcopalian pastor. Um, this is a book of her sermons. It's called The Bible and the New York Times. And she's written here a sermon on this psalm. And she has two interesting things, I think, to say about Thanksgiving. Um, it's hard for some of us to be thankful. And she tells this story. She says, the famous Dr. Samuel Johnson, author of the first major English dictionary, renowned conversationalist, wit, and man about town, was also a man of deep biblical faith. When, after heroic labors, the great lexicographer finally finished his dictionary, he sent the last manuscript bound to the publisher, Andrew Miller. Mr. Miller exclaimed to the messenger, Thank God I have done with him. When this was reported to Dr. Johnson, he smiled and said, I'm glad that he thanks God for anything. Uh, she goes on and she talks about a, a Jewish tradition of giving thanks in hard times. Um, and she says, in the aftermath of a pogrom in Russia, a pogrom is an anti-Jewish riot. In the aftermath of a pogrom in Russia, a, as a Jewish baker saw his business going up in flames, he said, so at least they burned out my competitor too. And Rutledge writes, finding something to be thankful for in the midst of disaster is an enduring gift. So it's there's two sort of problems that we have in being thankful. One is when we've when we've worked really hard, when we've overcome a lot of hardships to to gain success, sometimes the downside of that is that it's hard to be thankful. Um, it doesn't take away from our hard work to acknowledge that it's from God, but that can be hard when, when you've overcome a lot, when you've had, in, in other words, when you've had to wrestle success with the blood, sweat, and tears, uh, sometimes we forget to be thankful that it was God that allowed us to do that in the first place. Um, and then the other difficulty in being thankful is when things are bad when we suffer, when we endure tragedy. And the story of the Jewish baker is just an illustration of how uh, even when bad things happen to us, we can use humor to find something to be grateful for. And I see a lot of that today with COVID-19. I see a lot of humor. Um, and that's just a way for us to find something to be thankful for in the midst of really hard circumstances. So hard circumstances. So, um, know that God is on your side, that he vindicates his own followers, his own children. And know that we can find something to be thankful for, even in the midst of a tragedy. I hope you're having a great week. I hope the psalm blessed you. And uh, I will be back on Thursday afternoon. If you'd like to join us, we're reading through the Gospel of John. God bless, and may you have a good week and find something to be thankful for. Amen.